Hi, Chris from DinoJet here. This video is the second of a two-part series regarding LCD 200 data logging. In the first video, we showed you how to create a data log and how to play it back on the screen. Here in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a USB cable, pull that information up on your computer screen, and I'm going to show you how you might use it to make an adjustment to your Power Commander map. So here I am on the computer screen. I have connected the USB cable from the computer directly into the side of the LCD screen. I'm going to open the DinoJet Display File Manager. If you don't have this software, you can download it from the download section of PowerCommander.com. From the Display File Manager software, I can see my current maps and logs that I have stored on the screen. This is the map file that was in the Power Commander at the time we created the log. And here under Logs, we can find the actual log file that we created. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Log File Export Options. I'm going to make sure that the export time interval is every tenth of a second, or 0.1. That's going to basically ensure that I get 10 data points for every second of recorded time. I'll hit OK. Now under Logs, I'll need to get the selected file. I'm going to put that into the 2012 HD Touring folder, this one here, that's sitting on my desktop. I'm also going to go ahead and get the tune or the Power Commander map, and I'll keep that in the same folder. So now here in the folder I can see the actual log file that was on the screen, and the software also exported the log file into a .csv file or a comma separated values file. This is a very common file uh, for data. Uh, many different programs will open it and use it. For this example, we're going to use Microsoft Excel to open this file as a spreadsheet. And here's what the information looks like inside of the software, the Excel software. Every channel stream has a column of information. As I scroll up and down this data sheet, I want to freeze the top row so that I can always have my, uh, my channel headers visible. And I can do that by going to View, Freeze Panes, Freeze Top Row. Now as I scroll up and down the sheet, my column headers will stay at the top. So the first column is our time interval. Every tenth of a second has a different data point. Second column is PC5 map number, and we never change the maps, or we're not even using the map switch feature, so we're always going to be map number one. So as I explain these columns and I want to put them away, I'll go ahead and collapse them. PC5 RPM, this is the live RPM of the engine. PC5 TPS, or throttle percentage, throttle position sensor. So starting at 4.6 seconds, I began to open the throttle. I actually opened the throttle 100%, but the throttle body did not go to 100% until a few seconds later. That's because this bike is a throttle by wire model. So it's not going to be 100% throttle below 2500 RPM. It'll never open its throttle completely until you reach 2500 RPM. This is my rear wheel speed. We started out at roughly 20 miles an hour, and as we opened the throttle and increased the speed, looks like we topped out at about 120 miles an hour before I let off the throttle and started decelerating again. So we went from 20 miles an hour at 4.8 seconds to 120 miles an hour at 13.2 seconds. Gear, I was in fourth gear throughout this entire run, so this should never change. This column is always in fourth gear. I made the entire run in fourth gear. Temperature, for the sake of temperature, we just want to make sure that we're not overly hot. We're not looking at information that was recorded while the engine was overheating or while it was warming up. Uh, the engine temperature was 212 degrees when I started data logging. As I accelerated, the engine temperature got up to 213 degrees. 
which is all within normal operating temperature. So that tells me all of this information will be good to use. Duty cycle. This is the time that the injector is open throughout the cam revolution. This is the percentage of time that the injector is open. More or less, I just want to make sure that uh, I never hit 100% on my duty cycle. That means I have adequate fuel injectors and adequate fuel pressure for what I'm tuning. And the highest the duty percent ever gets is 68%, so we're well below 100, and that's fine. We have fuel adjust for cylinder one and cylinder two. That's the current fuel change value that my power commander is adding or subtracting. We have duty cycle for cylinder two, which is the same for the rear cylinder instead of the front cylinder. Ignition adjust, that's how much timing the power commander is adding or subtracting. Looks like we have zero timing adjustment. Engine temperature, this is a J1850 information. This is the engine temperature from the Harley ECM. We have Lambda 1, Lambda 2 for front and rear cylinder. We also have AFR 1 and AFR 2. Lambda and AFR are directly correlated with each other. In other words, lambda is just a universal way to view gasoline air fuel ratio. Uh, for the sake of this demonstration, we're using gasoline air fuel ratio in our power commander map under our target AFR tables. So I'm going to stick with AFR. Um, we'll just collapse lambda for now. So the most important information that I have and that I need is my current fuel adjustment my current air fuel ratio at my given RPM and throttle position. If I open up my power commander map, I can see here at 100% throttle, 100% throttle, 2500 RPM, my fuel adjust on cylinder one is 15, my fuel adjust on cylinder two is 17. If I look under my data log, at 100% throttle, 2500 RPM, my power commander adjust cylinder one is 15, same as it is here, and my cylinder two adjustment is 17, which is the same as it is here. Now the air fuel ratio that I want to be at, my desired air fuel ratio, is 13.0. My actual air fuel ratio at that RPM and throttle position is 12.4 on cylinder one and 11.9 or 12.0 on cylinder two. So I know that I'm richer than my desired air fuel ratio of 13. As the RPMs increase, as I get into 2750, my fuel change becomes 16 and 20. My air fuel ratio is quite a, eh, slightly richer, about the same. Pretty much throughout the entire 100% throttle run, I am richer than my desired air fuel ratio of 13.0. I'm uh, anywhere from 12.0 to 12.5 on cylinder one, and I'm anywhere as rich as 12.0 to about 12.5 on cylinder two. So I'm going to start making some adjustments to my power commander map and I'm going to start at the 2500 RPM row and I'm just going to work my way down the 100% throttle column and I'm going to use this information here to make adjustments in my 100% throttle column. Now if I needed to adjust 80% throttle I would need to record a data log at 80% throttle run, 60, 40 and all the other throttle positions. But since I only have enough information here to adjust my 100% throttle column that's only where that's the only place I'm going to make an adjustment. So knowing that my actual air fuel ratio is anywhere from a half a point to a full point richer than my desired air fuel ratio, I know that I'm going to need to subtract 5 to 10 percent of the fuel out of the 100 percent throttle column of my power commander map. Uh, this would be of course a, an example of a manual edit. This type of arithmetic is also done automatically through the auto-tune accessory. Mm -hmm.